Hey, Pete. Hi, Greg. Listen, how's the uh, filthy swine? The old Nazi? That man's excited. This is the first time he's talked to a TV camera. Well, I guess it's a pretty exciting discovery. Hey, listen, could you give me a hand with the equipment? I can't move from here, but I'll send Frank out. Good enough. Dr. Schweikert, could you tell us something about the beginnings of this experiment? We started with some fossils, organic material, preserved for millions of years in the heart of a meteorite. After thousands of experiments, we have brought about certain biochemical reactions controlled by various enzymes. We've succeeded in assembling the cell of a bacterium, the chromosomes, the DNA, and the genetic code. The method employed was cloning. Mm -hmm. Professor Schweikert, what is the ultimate aim of this research? We have uh, created uh, the living being uh, visible under this microscope. Uh, to demonstrate uh, that the origin of life can uh, very likely be attributed to artificial fertilization uh, caused uh, by viruses and bacteria coming from space and falling onto our planet with showers of uh, meteorites. How long has it taken you to solve this uh, enigma of uh, genetic engineering, Professor? The number of enzymes to be used alternatively in the biochemical reactions was 2,000. We needed to try more than half of them uh, before we found the right one. Testing them with the many proteins formed by the cell, uh, well to cut it short, we made almost 200,000 tests. That should give you an idea of the difficulties we had to face. We've been trying to iron them out for seven years now. I guess during these seven years you've had uh, plenty of discouragement, Professor. Hmm? Yes, why deny it? <laughs> it was the same probability of solving the Rubik cube blindfold. <laughs> but uh, thanks to the use of computers, we succeeded. And of course, thanks also to a considerable amount of luck. All right, stop. Thank you, Professor Schweikert. That's the end of the interview. Now you'll have to take pictures of our little creature. But treat it gently, Mr. Milford. You yourself realize by now how much trouble it's taken to bring it into the world. Shooting that cell is going to be complicated, too. I'll need a special apparatus. I'm afraid I'm going to be here all night. All right. In that case, Dr. Stein will stay here. She'll uh, give you any Dr. assistance Stein? you might need. I wish you luck, then. Thank you, Doctor. And try not to disappoint a filthy old Nazi. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, the message is confirmed beyond question. What you say is incredible. It's not what I say. I am the target of unknown forces. Unknown forces? Do you believe that? Other messages that I have reported have been confirmed. You haven't answered my question. Do you believe it? I would not have been called back to this place a second time and so insistently. I am absolutely certain, and what is happening in Professor Schweiker's laboratory is of great importance and has not been looked into properly yet. Thank you, Mr. Hager. Thank you. Almost the same size we see it under our microscope. But lit up like this, it looks more vital. The light, the light brings out a greater number of colors. Yeah, well, I'm changing the speed of the film, and I've opened up the aperture a bit, oh. too. To tell the truth, it's the same as you. Trial and error. <laughs> <laughs> Have you always been in this profession? Well, yeah, more or less. Uh, ever since I was a boy. 
You know, I began as an extra, then I was a prop man, and now a TV reporter. The same as lots of guys, I guess. You don't sound very enthusiastic. Uh, you get used to it. It does get very tiring. I've done it all, nearly. Vietnam, Nicaragua, the Falkland Island invasion. Always hauling a camera on your shoulder, a return ticket you may never use in your pocket. Mm. Well, it's cold. Oh, sorry. So at a certain point, you just say that's enough, huh? Yeah, right. Like when you're always shooting the same scenes over and over again. People dying, like animals. Concentration camps. Hopes never being fulfilled. Anyway, I quit that. So, now I work for the local television stations. It's uh, very easy, but not much money. Well, at least it makes for a peaceful retirement. As long as you don't confess to yourself that it bores you to death. Hmm. What's up? Hey! I keep asking for new equipment and all this old... Hell. Hey, Janet. Huh? I think we got trouble. What do you mean? Here, look at this. On top. On top of that. There. Oh, my God. It's not moving anymore. I think it's dead. It is dead. Oh, come on. Have a look at this. Look, I think it's come back to life. Oh, thank God. The filthy Nazi would have had a stroke. But first, he would have had a shot. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> really. was all that about? Well, maybe a cathode ray tube captured those images through the television aerial and projected them, but... Uh-uh. Not very likely, huh? Not. And those voices, did you understand anything? I was even afraid to ask if you'd heard them, too. Hey, you guys. It's boring here. I got some cards and chips in the office. Let's play a hand or two of poker. <laughs> <laughs> that equipment before it sets fire to us, okay? This is for the university. And this is the interview with Dr. Schweikert. Mm -mm. This is for me. I have to check it on the moviola. Oh, listen, get somebody to get the rest of the gear out of the car, hmm? I tell you. Oh, and another thing. Tell the boss. Next time, I want an assistant or I report it to the union, okay? <laughs> Listen, did the university telephone? No.
There's no one in the university. So if anyone calls, I'm in the moviola, okay? Job, I yeah, service with a smile. <laughs> More requests, Dr. Warmick? Not for the moment. That basement's equipped better than a first-class chemistry laboratory. Well, enjoy your work, then. A being with extraordinary powers will develop from that cell. And with the genetic conditioning it receives from Dr. Warmick, it will be absolutely dependent upon my will. I'll be able to use its power and intelligence against anyone. They'll all be at our feet, Roach. Banks, holding companies, governments. We'll dictate our conditions to them. Can you understand that, Roach? We'll have them right where we want them. Roach. I'm going to Washington right away. You can drive me to the airport. We can talk in the car. Police. Six dead men created a lot of confusion. Cops won't just sit around on their backsides. Dozens of murders have been committed in this city, and dozens of murders have been forgotten. I have the impression I'm gambling without knowing exactly what cards I'm holding. We're going ahead on an assumption. We're going ahead, all right. But not on an assumption. On a certainty. Dr. Warmick told me the discovery of that cell will be the most important discovery of the century. That's what he believes, and that's what I believe. Have you thought about how to act if they should happen to identify us? When the time comes, we will identify ourselves. The whole world will know who we are and what we possess. Mr. Anderson, your plane is ready. been Washington long enough to talk to a group of senators who are on our side. In the meantime, keep an eye on Dr. Warmick. 
See that he gets everything he needs. He's our key man, though. Oh, one more thing, Roach. That TV reporter. Get rid of him before he messes everything up. Right. Here, Maury, is the cop of my little spook show. I thought you and the guys in the fraud squad might like to come up with an answer. You don't expect me to swallow that story about killer ghosts, do you? Well, I got five corpses on my hands that say our man's a killer in flesh and blood. I never believed in ghosts. Well, me neither, but what's your theory, hmm? Scientific espionage or some crud like that. Oh, come on. Professor Schweikert was going to make an announcement about this revolutionary discovery at that uh, Congress. What, in four days' time? That's not a secret. Yeah, but there's still a theft of the cell. Inspector. Yeah. We're all through here. I want your report today, along with the one from the police doctor, OK? Got it. Another murder yesterday. Oh, yeah? Down in the Everglades. Maybe the same gun. No. Oh, you think there's a connection? Nah, that old man was a poor bastard with no friends. A member of some UFO spotter society. What do you mean? He saw flying saucers? He sure as hell did. Oh, God. Every now and again, he'd claim he'd seen one. Maury, what you need to be replaced with is either a medium or a ghostbuster. <laughs> <laughs> Just a second. Nothing missing, Dr. Elliot. Everything in order? Seems so, at least. Diary of the experiments. The chemical formulas the professor developed. It's all here, I'd say. I'll be more precise when I've had more time with the project. Thank you, and goodbye, Dr. Elliot. And let Miami PD know if you come across something, huh? Even if it seems insignificant. I'll do that, Inspector. Greg, thanks again for the video cassette. I'll have a look at it tonight with the kids. <laughs> Enjoy it. So, uh, you're here to replace Professor Schweikert, huh? <laughs> the university's decided that. Hmm. If you're thinking that I killed Schweikert to get hold of his project, I'll have to disappoint you. I've already told Inspector Morris that my duties here are purely formal. The fossil organic material from the meteorite is exhausted. It was all used up in the previous experiments. We need another meteorite with the same properties. We'll have to search every museum in the world to find one, or hope that one falls here on the university campus. It'll take years. Instead, I intend to devote myself to my personal research. Mm -hmm. Are you Craig Milford, the TV reporter? Yeah. Pleased to meet you, Dr. Elliott. I've heard about those strange images you took. What did they say? Well, the language is completely incomprehensible. Hmm. We need an expert. Someone able to decipher it. Would be interesting to understand it. Yeah, I guess. Have you uh, any suggestions who could give me help? Yeah, who is it? Uh, Craig, this is John. John who? I'm taking over for Susan today. What's the matter with her? Expecting another baby? Hey, get over to the empty field south of the freeway. Seems like there's a guy there who wants to wipe out his family. Uh -huh. Just my cup of tea, huh? Just get there now and get back here even sooner. With your coverage, it has to go on the 6 o'clock news. Will do, amigo.
shot a helicopter with a handgun. Yeah, don't manage it every day. Guess I was lucky. Anyway, thanks for the lift. Probably South America. Oh, Venezuela. Colombia. Hard to say what period. Pre-Columbian, I'd say. Oh. Are you Craig Milford? Yeah, are you some sort of ghost who came through the wall? I'm sorry, you look so busy, I hated to disturb you. I'm Joanna Fitzgerald. Yesterday at the university, they told me you were doing a documentary and you needed to decipher a sort of Martian message. Well, my Martian's kind of rusty, but I will do the work for free if you'll put my name up there in lights. Well. That's the fourth, isn't it? You're spending the earth on these cassettes, as far as I can see. Well, I hope it's a good investment. A lot of stations want to buy this, but uh, I don't want to sell it until I've got a plausible commentary. So how long do you calculate your job will take? First, I need to go to the library and consult a volume that's there. After which, I'll get some takeout Chinese food and listen to the tape again in the solitude of my little room. I really get my best ideas while having a shower. So, what are the good ideas you've come up with on this little pad? Oh, I, I think I've identified some of the sounds. If I'm right, they belong to a very ancient alphabet that expressed the language of the subconscious. Thet, for instance, means the Earth. Resh is the universe. And Kaf is force. So, what's its uh, root? They're words of the ancient Atlantis language, inexplicably found later in Etruscan inscriptions. I thought that yours was an exact science. It is. Well, at the moment, this is going to look like uh, home movies on spiritualism. <laughs> Could be. Well, according to you and your theory, this avant-garde experiment of cloning is now going to end up as a video of the spirits of Atlantis. Mm. Come on, there must be a better explanation. Don't you believe in the paranormal? I believe in what can be repeated again in front of my movie cameras. Well, then how do you go about explaining all these mysteries? They're probably from the brain, the only great mystery that remains to be solved. You have an interesting way of looking at things, from behind the movie camera and without involvement. Taxi! Are you happy? Huh? Happy? Taxi! You didn't give me an answer. What, if I'm happy? Who is happy? Are you married? No, with my kind of job, it's hard to put down roots. The one time I tried it, went to sea. Now you've changed your way of life. You could try again. What's that? A marriage proposal? Why not? I used to dream of sheltering in the strong arms of an adventurous globetrotter. You got the wrong guy. Besides, I'm on the retired list now. Too bad. Oh, taxi! Hey, you haven't told me anything about yourself. You made me do all the talking. As soon as I have news, I'll invite you to supper. We'll talk then. Bye. Doing a 
just in Washington, the phenomenon has taken on striking dimensions. We thought it might depend on the addition of special amino acids. To the solution in which the slide was immersed, but the process went on even after we had suspended the treatment. A transformation occurred in less than 48 hours. The conclusion, therefore, is that the cells reproduce by autoclonation at surprising speed. A rate of growth for which there is no scientific explanation and which has turned a cell in an incredibly short time into a living organism. One which is not only visible to the naked eye, but the size of a human fetus after a month's gestation. Here. You can see for yourself, it's coming along well. Thank you, Dr. Warwick. You're doing a wonderful job. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. a test of the emergency power generator in case the electricity should fail. As you see, we have adopted all the security measures. Very good. That TV reporter, has the business been taken care of? He's still alive, but not for much longer. Hmm. If I didn't hurt all over, I'd be laughing. There's nothing to joke about, Craig. It's a terribly serious matter. Well, I guess we'd better have a drink before we talk about this. Oh, just, uh, what did these Etruscans say? Huh? They're not Etruscans. Oh, I'm sorry, the uh, people of Atlantis. sounds, those words, are an alarm. They're warning us of a tremendous danger. Mankind is about to be completely destroyed. Well, it's not a surprise to me. All our lifetime, we've been living on an arsenal of atomic bombs. Your friends from Atlantis disappoint me somewhat. Atlantis doesn't come into it. Oh, uh, well, whatever. The ghosts of uh, collective fear materialization of nightmares, reflections of the subconscious. No way, none of those things. You've received a message from another world. The images and the voices you recorded belong to a different dimension of the universe. Those beings appeared while you were photographing that clone cell. Clone cell, right. Craig, that's where the danger is lurking. Uh, Joanna! Oh. Are you all right? Oh, it's all right. It's okay. My arm.
What's behind all this story? Hmm? And who are you, really? Tomorrow. Tomorrow at the Everglades. You'll have an answer to all the questions. Call by and pick me up at three. The Everglades? Oh, come on, Joanna. This is crazy. How would you react to the idea of a close encounter? Why? Have the Martians landed? Off that camera, lift that lens. Don't ask Phil, haven't got a dime till payday. Excuse me, Angel Face. If anyone happens to ask after me, I'm down in the ever-loving Everglades on an assignment. Hmm? Mm -hmm. The university stuff. Is it developed? Do they bring it back? Yet? Oh, have patience, Milford. Uh, the university stuff. Have they brought it back? No. And anyhow, I couldn't give it to you. It's got to be handed over to the police. And couldn't I have just a little look at it, you know, before you give it back? Hmm? God, don't you ever give a guy a break. I mean, provided, that is, that he doesn't tell anybody. No, Craig, I don't want to lose my job. And I'm fed up with the material, with the police, with that other guy and you asking me the same question. Hey, 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 what guy? Uh, someone sent by the university, I think. How long ago? Two seconds ago. He only just left. Milford. Dr. Elliot. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? I live right there. Well, did you see her go out? Who? Joanna. Joanna Fitzgerald. Oh, yeah, she went out, but three years ago. What do you mean? What do I mean? That the house has been empty for three years. Well, either this is some kind of joke or I'm having hallucinations. Because I was in that house last night with Joanna. In fact, it was Joanna who asked me to drop by and pick her up. What I said was the truth. As you can see, no one's here to open the door. Well, I'll just kick the damn thing down then. No, wait. I have the keys. Fitzgerald. Huh. 
Hey, Elliot. Elliot? Elliot! Elliot! Light blue eyes. She want to get over a little bit. She ran an airboat to get over there. Okay, thanks. Joanna! Identified swamp island in the Everglades. We have proof here. In fact, it's what a ufologist would call classic proof of an alien starship landing. I think they call it a, a nest. It's basically a circle of about 40, 45 feet in diameter. I haven't got a good eye for measuring distances. This is one of several indentations spread at regular intervals within the circumference. In the center, there is a perfect square walking over to that center square now. In the middle of it is a strange-looking sign. I'll try to get it in close-up. It's almost like a scientific symbol or a letter from a strange alphabet. You could call it a, a monogram or, or a trademark of the extraterrestrial. Sure. Who are you? A projection of yourself, Craig. This is the way the extraterrestrials can speak to you. I'm dreaming. No, you're not dreaming, Craig. You're living through a timeless moment. For you now, time is standing still. But why? Because you have been chosen for a mission. A mission? Why me? Everyone who's chosen asks that question. That's not an answer. It's the best you'll get. You have been guided here by contacts. Contacts? Yes. Other humans like you work to help the extraterrestrials. Joanna, huh? Yes. Oh, my God. You want me to destroy that cell, don't you? Yes. That cell belonged to a cruel horde that once dominated space thousands of years ago. But they were destroyed by those who want cosmic peace. 
If that cell increases further in size, it will become a powerful and evil force. It is now in the hands of a man named Anderson, a criminal, who is trying to impose genetic conditioning on the cell to become its absolute master. It could become the most powerful force in the cosmos. But why do you need a human to destroy that cell? Because the extraterrestrials cannot gain access to your dimension, Craig. Be very careful. This Anderson is a very dangerous man. If you're defeated, it will mean the end of all creation. As you see, you're not being asked to do much. Only to save the universe. Craig, look out!
still growing at an extraordinary rate. In a short time, it's become a fetus that nature would have taken months to create. The extraordinary thing is that it's controlling itself. All the parameters we know about have gone by the board. Do you realize that the fetus itself establishes the energy it has to absorb? We feed the machine data for it to follow based on the fetus's own body temperature. Don't forget, we are in the presence of an intelligence unknown to us. And with ancestral memories inside it, we know nothing about. It's important to keep it under constant control so we can carry on the system of genetic conditioning we've set up. Don't worry, Mr. Anderson. Its unforeseen development took us a bit by surprise, but we weren't totally caught unawares. I think you can go ahead and draw up those economic agreements you were so keen on. Already done, Warmick. Already done. You see, I'm not about to let myself be caught unawares either. It's turned out the way you wanted. They're finished. I saw them burning together under my very eyes. Hmm. I've managed to prepare the chemical compound indicated by the aliens. Just a few drops for the time being, and uh, I'd like to try out its effect in your presence. You, Dr. Elliot? I apologize for not revealing myself sooner, but I wasn't sure you'd be on our side. Is that the substance we have to use? Yes. Even though I can't manage to understand its real corrosive capacity on organic matter. However, we'll soon see how effective it is. I decided to conduct the experiment on the carcass of an animal. Now, we'll see what happens. to say, Joanna. All this is just as incredible to me as it is to you. It's gone through and dissolved even steel. But it hasn't destroyed either the test tube or that. This liquid can destroy any material except crystal enriched with isotopes. <laughs> say, Joanna. All this is just as incredible to me as it is to you. It's gone through and dissolved even steel. But it hasn't destroyed either the test tube or that. This liquid can destroy any material except crystal enriched with isotopes. <laughs> cobwebs were only a hallucination. Just to demonstrate your powers, huh? You ought to be used to little surprises by now. 
Used to them. Give me a little more time, please. And uh, a couple of fingers of scotch. I might get used to that. What are you thinking about? Oh, everything. And yeah, nothing. What's that, a puzzle? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, ever since I met you, I've been looking at things in a different light. A sort of a new reality. I mean, how can I look at the sky again the same way I did before? And all those others. And me, myself. <laughs> it's bewildering. I mean, uh, it's incredible. It's not every day that a guy gets to meet uh, somebody from outer space. Cosmic threats. So I've got to admit that uh, it's likely to put anybody slightly off his stride, don't you think? But you never lost control of the situation. Or of yourself. That's what we were counting on. That's why you were chosen. And I thought you chose me because you were madly in love with me. Well. I can't deny I've taken a liking to you. Mm. How much? <laughs> Do I make myself clear? Mm. Not bad for a beginning. <laughs> Hello there. You want some more coffee? No, thank you. It's all for me. Uh, Elliot's coming in a few minutes. I must concentrate. Okay with me. First thing is to force Anderson and his bodyguard to leave the house. Using telepathy. Joanne, are you sure Craig, this is going to... please. I need silence. Oh, sure, sorry. Where is Roach? In the other room, sir. Roach! Senator Moriarty is about to arrive. We're meeting him at the Aero Club. Our friends in Washington have sent him so he can see with his own eyes how the situation is progressing.
Now it's up to you. Elliot's just arriving. Well, I can only do my best. I'll be with you every moment. I hope you've chosen the right guy. I'm just wondering, but at this stage, it's too late to go back. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? What have you got? Um, an old friend. I don't want to have to use it, but it's my form of security. This is a solution to destroy the creature. Be more than careful. It's worse than a bomb. Damn right I will. Don't want this going off in my pocket. Take it easy on the bumps. Slow down, you'll end up in that ditch. Hey, for God's sake, Elliot, slow down! The brakes are broken and the accelerator's blocked! We'll try the handbrake! This is no good! We gotta make it, Craig. You have to carry out your mission. If you're gonna get out of here, you're gonna kill yourself. Not bad at you. See that grassy area? I'll head across it. Jump out. You have to take the chance. All right, but we both jump together, okay? Okay. When I say now, we both jump. Are you ready? Yeah. Now! What time does the senator's jet arrive?
I'm uh, Craig Milford. Dr. Warmick is expecting me. Hold on, I'll check. Yes? There's a Mr. Craig Milford here. Says you're expecting him. Mr. Craig Milford? Yes, I am expecting him. Of course. Could you bring him down here to the laboratory? Okay. Stuart, come here and take someone down to see Dr. Warmick. to pick up Senator Moriarty. What's the matter? You mean to say you don't remember? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We've got to get back to the house fast. Come on. This way. Stop that, Craig Milford. He's an intruder. You must absolutely stop him from getting to the laboratory. Hey, you, stop there. Get going, damn it. here and don't move. Yes, sir. Anybody who enters at the door has to be killed, okay? Okay, don't worry.
Stop it, Mr. Milford. Who are you? What do you want? What are you doing here? It's very simple, really. I've come to see the doctor. Damn it, move it. Come on, push it. I got it floored, Mr. Anderson. I think we've got trouble here. Take a look at this. Oh, God, it's not moving anymore. I think it's dead.
回呀、啊。Put it down. Impossible, my God. This guy, I saw him die. He burned to death. It seems you made a mistake, Roach. All right, you bastard. Who do you really work for? Should I blow his brains out? Why not? Roach. Move. Down, Craig. Thanks, Joanna. Thank God they didn't know what you're capable of. Why didn't you use that solution, the one Elliot prepared, hmm? Honey, if I told you what went on down there, you wouldn't believe it. Your face. It's all banged up. We should stop at a hospital. First, I'm going to destroy that golem. Grind it up, or chop it into pieces. So instead of just one, we could be faced with... with thousands or even millions of monsters, of golems. It's too dangerous. We haven't got any choice. We have to deliver the thing to our friends. Are you in contact with them telepathically? Yes, but something strange is happening. Like they're finding it difficult to transmit my powers to me. What's the matter? What is it? Hey, Joanna, look. <sighs> my God. Joanna, listen. Everything's now in your hands. You've got to concentrate. Try to talk to them. Find out when and where we can take it to them. We must destroy this monster. We're done for. Try. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 